So this is another two-parter that comes from Maddie Ann and the DFAJ. Um, the first part of the question is, how do I know my perfect major or what my major even is? And the second part of the question is, should I pursue a Bible major or the major I want? Um, it's a pretty interesting one. Want to open it up? Well, I could start off by saying that if you're undecided and it's coming down to the wire, there is nothing wrong with being undeclared. Mm -hmm. And it's actually a lot of times a benefit um, because you have a lot of opportunity to get your general education requirements out of the way um, before you dive into a more major specific, you know, curriculum. Um, so I would say if you're really undecided, you have no idea where your skill set really shines or what your passion is, that's totally fine. And I think a lot of people don't know, especially 17, 18 years old, that's not really, you know, not really high time to decide what you're going to do for the rest of your life. And it's an expectation that's been placed on all of us very early on. Um, but again, if you don't know, you don't know, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I do think that you should be true to yourself and you should do, you know, do your due diligence about is this going to make for, you know, a good career option for me, but at the same time, you know, go with your gut. And, and I can speak to that because I started out as an English and journalism major. I actually was kind of shooed out of it by naysayers and my own anxieties about Will I be able to make a Bible career out of writing? Um, and lo and behold, I came full circle and now I'm writing professionally. So, you know, I would say it wasn't the worst thing that ever happened to me to switch majors. Um, but again, if I could turn back time, I, I think I would be a stronger writer if I had stayed in, in the writing curriculum, um, in the English curriculum rather. So, you know, don't necessarily focus too much on what am I gonna do with this say, how can I make this mine? How can I be the best at what I am skilled and passionate about? Um, and, you know, I would say that makes for the most successful and viable careers, in my opinion. Should I pursue a viable major or the major I want? It's the same thing. Um, every major is viable, even philosophy majors, even English lit majors that we say, oh, the, you're not going to get a job with that. You can get a job with that. With philosophy, especially, there's a lot of writing. With English literature, there's a lot of writing. It's how you use that degree um, that really pushes it forward. And, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you, you learn so many different things in your majors that you can apply to so many different um, different places, different careers. I learned how to do web design in my major, which I don't use on a daily basis, but I have had to use at different points in my jobs. Like it's Karen gets stuff done. <laughs> Tyler's just the face. Doing his job. <laughs> Doing his job. I don't, I don't do that. But like I have, you know, every once in a while Tyler will be like, oh, here's this web code stuff. I'm like, I understand that. Mm -hmm. And so, so you're you're gonna learn stuff that isn't necessarily like that. You, that you might say, well, this isn't my major, but it is your major, and it is your job. And just like learn as much as you can. And and I, I again, I believe that you know, viable major and major I want is it's the same thing. Because um, even if you do have like a non-viable major, right? I hate that phrase, but <laughs> if you have one of those, you can always use it to to do a stepping stone for grad school. There are plenty of like. A friend who was a classics major, and then he went on to law school. But he right. just needed that that classics degree. There's and it so him many school. options. Yeah. There are so many degrees that are so dynamic, and also, you know, like Carol was saying, just electives and the gen ed requirements are making sure that you're having a well-rounded education. And yep. you're walking away with a degree not just so you are, you know, a so-called expert in this major. Um, but so that you're an educated individual, and, you know, you, you're a step above what you were before. And I think that's important, too, to think about for undeclared majors as well, especially if you are undeclared or undecided. Thinking about a liberal arts college is a great, great choice um, because their whole focus is on, you know, providing students with this breadth of knowledge and making sure that they have a really well-rounded education. And that gives you a lot more options out in the, in the professional working world and everything like that. Um, so 
yeah, I, I, I totally agree with you. Like, I don't think there is a major that is not viable. It depends on what you do with it. Yeah, I think this that second part about a viable major kind of speaks to my um, college application process a lot. Um, in high school, I was really in love with uh, film and editing. Um, I had taken some like advanced courses through high school, and I was almost like dead set on that. This is what I want to do for a career. Um, going back to a question we were talking about earlier about um, dealing with pressures from parents, um, I feel like this idea of a viable, non-viable major was largely influenced by my parents. Um, you know, they kept asking me, well, what, what are you going to do with, um, you know, uh, are you going to be a director or producer? Like, it, and, it, and you kind of need to know the right people. You really need to start that at a, at a young age to get a foot in the door, which is something I didn't really have. I was approaching it from a strictly hobby kind of standpoint. Um, so I, I still included that in my college search. Uh, I, like Tyler, I was searching specifically for the new media major, which was a, a brand new um, uh, major that not a lot of schools were offering yet. So I, I still worked that um, film aspect into uh, my, my major, but I wasn't you know, putting all of my eggs in one basket, um, so to speak, with uh, you know, that, I think film is, is one of those majors that's, it's a big, um, people sometimes question the viability of it because it is a big risk, big reward uh, major. And I, I did end up actually pursuing um, film and video production as a minor, and it, it took no um, extra, really, effort out of my <laughs> major. No, I'm not saying, because it was fun for me. Yeah. So it, it didn't take away from my major, it didn't detract from any of my other courses. And I still got to pursue that, um, that kind of industry a little bit without you know, paying for that to be my major. So I did get uh, an exposure of everything. Um, so definitely if you're, if you're unsure of, you know, something that you really want to pursue, but don't know if it's a 100% your career choice. And as Kara said, any, any major is a, can, can make a viable career. Um, but if you're unsure, minors are a great uh, way to address that. <clears throat> And also, you can tailor your your major and what you're studying. You can make anything out of it, um, and kind of um, uh, tailor it towards your interests, what you want to do in life, and make it your your own unique experience. More and more programs are offering specializations and concentrations exactly. of all sorts in almost all of their departments. So, you know, if if you think maybe something might be too broad or too general there's usually a way to cater it to what your real interests are within that field. Also, quick, quick follow your dream story that just popped in my head. <laughs> um, when I was in high school, I was working for this company and there was someone there who asked, you know, what was I gonna major in college? And I said, professional writing. And he goes, That's, you're not gonna do a job with that. I was like, well, I'm gonna work in editing. And I was like, it's gonna happen. He goes, it's not gonna happen. Uh, and he told me I should major in history instead. And I was like, I don't want to major in history. That's that's not what I want to do with my life. He's like, yeah, but it shows you can do X, Y, and Z. And I was like, okay, I'll think of it as a backup. And one of my schools didn't have a, a good writing program. So I was like, all right, I'll go for the history program. And I didn't go to that school. Uh, a couple months ago, he messages me on Twitter because I shared a, an article I written on College Express on Twitter. And he goes, great job on that College Express article. I'm like, it's my job. You said my major was going to be useless. <laughs> so don't, don't always, don't listen to the naysayers. Exactly. Haters gonna hate. Yeah. I get two follow-up things on that is one is my uncle was exactly the same way. When I was going around the table, it was like a Thanksgiving type deal. I was just talking about going to college. And, you know, what are you going to, are you going to do? Oh, I'm going to make websites. Ah, you don't need to go to school for that. True. <laughs> so, if I was to do it all over again, I probably wouldn't go for what I went for. We're talking about Bible majors and what you pick. Technology changes so rapidly that if you are going into one of those fields, that's great. It worked out well. I have no regrets. But if I was to do it all over again, or I went to go for a grad school, it would be with business. Use something that uh, is going to complement what your, 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 your true drive is, like Devin saying, you know, video production and doing all those things. Try to pick stuff that would complement it really well, and then you have two skill sets. 
Whereas technology is changing so rapidly that you go in, you can learn as things are coming out. I have a good buddy that graduated with me, exact same degree, and he answers calls for a living. That's what he does now. If you ask him anything about today, how do I do this? He has no idea. So that's another thing too is, yeah, you can go to school for four years, but if you don't use it, you lose it. And that's not just a muscle group, that's your, your learning abilities too. Absolutely. So viable major is, anything is a viable major. You go out into college, you get into a classroom, you're gonna learn critical thinking, which is gonna save you in so many different scenarios. Just going out with friends and hanging out, there's gonna be something that pops out. And it's like, oh, well, you know, in my experience from college, I did this, so let's, let's roll that. Um, same thing within the daily work life. Something might pop up that's way out of your scope. Never thought we were going to do a podcast. And <laughs> here, here we, we are. So it's uh, things, things happen. And having those abilities to have creative thinking, roll with everything, and that all came from schooling. So. Yeah. Um, we should probably cover the first part of the question as well. How do, how do I know what my perfect major is? Um, how did everyone else feel their perfect major? I think I, like Tyler, was very lucky in that I knew pretty much what I what I wanted to go for. But I would say about a third of the people that I, I knew from uh, school transferred or changed, or not transferred, but changed majors um, within their first year. Because um, just some people don't know and um, that the first year is pretty crucial and I know in my program they specifically tried to wean a lot of people out and, and make sure you know if, if you had a coding mentality uh, or if you didn't have a coding mentality that you weren't in the program um, some professors can be kind of ruthless um, so I, I almost think it's it would have if I were to go back and let's say I was completely undecided I would feel less stressed um, going in as undecided or um, what they call it like foundation sometimes yeah. now. Um, I would feel more confident doing that than going in with a set major that, you know, I didn't know if I was going to pursue. If, if I had the slightest shred of doubt that, you know, this is what I want to pursue, I would much, much rather go for like an exploratory learning major, which I think it, just about every school does. I think it's, you know, for some people it just kind of falls into your lap and I think that was the case for me is that writing was the only thing that I consistently felt like I was skilled at and I enjoyed. Um, so it just kind of was a no-brainer for me. But I know a lot of friends that it took a lot of, you know, thinking and researching and talking and networking. And reflecting and all on your that. own personality too, yeah, I think right. it's huge because, you know, um, you might like business, but the, the business mindset, the culture of, of business and finance is, is atrocious in my, in my opinion. <laughs> I would never want to be there, but it, you know, some people love it. Some, that's what some people gravitate towards, but, um, I, I love it. It's hard to think about it sometimes when, you know, when you're thinking about schools and you're thinking about majors, it doesn't always translate to a specific job or a specific profession yeah. um it might be an umbrella over you know many different fields many different jobs and i think that's where people get stuck is they say well you know i have the personality and the skill set to do this what do i study in school to get yeah. there um but that's where you you reach out to schools and you say you know what program is right for x y and z um and you know you just got to do your research and but again, you don't have to decide what you're going to do for a job for the rest of your life before you even step into your institution of choice. Um, it's all about, you know, the education at large, at whole. Yeah, I would um, say before you decide your major, decide what interests you and what kind of, what your strengths are. Um, there's a lot of really great tools out there. Um, one being a, an in-house one we've been developing called uh, Darts, which... Um, kind of breaks down your personality by uh, color, and each color represents um, kind of just a, a different um, <clears throat> personality trait. And I think doing something like that is extremely helpful in seeing, um, you know, the type of work environment you'd want to be in, the type of worker you are, you know, are you a go-getter or are you somebody that um, is a more supportive, you know, take a supportive role, or are you, you know, just a creative worker? And um, you know, really 
reflecting on yourself and, and asking, um, you know, what my strengths are, what weaknesses and what um, traits I will never have are, are pretty important on, uh, you know, deciding what majors would be, would work. I think even just in high school when you're taking your extracurriculars, and what do you find enjoyable? Jumping into those things and then saying, well, you know, for example, robotics was something I was in high school for. So how do I take robotics and, you know, where does, where does that go? That one's kind of an obvious jumping from robotics to coding. But take something that's like, hey, I'm the you know, team captain on my baseball team. You can be a great team leader. So you take that experience and you can, exactly. with yeah. the personalities, you find things that you like, that you're good at. That's where you're going to be the most happy. So whatever you're doing in high school that's giving you that, you should pursue. And don't necessarily do it just by the things you're specifically good at or just like so working in editing I have a lot of friends who are like I love to read I should be an editor but then they get into the position and they're like I hate this so much I don't like this part of it I don't like this part of it and so look at the other parts of what it is you want to do before you say that's what I want to do. For me, I like making things look as pretty as possible, make it the best that it can be, and that's why I knew I wanted to be an editor, that's why I knew I wanted to, to get a professional writing degree, because I knew this would give me the grounding to do exactly that. Um, was I the best at it in high school? No. There were people who were way better at peer review than I was, but I it was something I wanted to work towards. So. It doesn't have to be the thing that comes naturally to you. There are people who are like, oh, I'm a perfect singer naturally, but I don't want to go into that as a profession. They want to do something else. And you're welcome to have hobbies that are things you're naturally good at and you enjoy. But it, if it's something that drives you to do better, something that you want to continue to pursue, that's what you really want to get into with your major because then you'll you'll learn the new your grittier parts. I took right. a whole class on copy editing, which is nothing but here's all the grammar in the English language. And I loved it. And Tyler <laughs> would not. <laughs> yeah. But like, and that's the thing is you have to want yeah. you have to want to put in the work and you have to want to struggle where others would rather rip their own hair out. And honestly that's the that speaks volumes about your yeah. your passion and your interest and your skills being willing to put up with that. And you have stuff. to want to learn about right, it. Right. Because if you're like, I don't really care to learn about statistics, that's a huge right. part of business. Right. So you have yeah, to care. I mean, that's, a, that's a great point to think about all of the encompassed things yeah. um, you know, in your interests, you know, just because you like one part of it. You know, I like and I know plenty of people that said, I want to help people for mm -hmm. a living, but they couldn't handle blood and bodily fluids so nursing didn't work out you know, <laughs> things like that so you have to you do have to put everything in perspective in that way and think can I handle all of the aspects of this and do they interest me exactly yeah.